I missed anything. Oh, so new bell fitted after my little accident where I left it alone machining and it broke a belt. Haven't learned anything, clearly. We can carry on doing the subframes. Uh, I did. You a bit bright? A bit calmer in it. So we can crackle with subframes, right? I've, I've finished machining all the bits. Uh, took a while. If it was a manual lathe, it would have been a bit quicker, but you know. There you go, these things happen, don't they? I've got my four bosses done. We'll carry on making the jig for the subframe so we can cut it about. Um, the laser cutting's back for the plates. So 90% of the stuff I've got here so we can finish it. So let's get this frame bolted up, welded. We'll go from there. Right, I've skipped a step, but it's nothing too significant. So all the bosses that I just turned up, I've just tacked onto here. I'm not going to weld them any more than that. I just tacked them. Um, so now they kind of locate in the front and the back. Uh, it turns out these aren't actually in line, there's a slight offset, so I've also kind of re drilled that. So it'll still locate fine, um, but it's in the right place. All I'm going to do to complete this jig is just the bar across the front. So I need these level on the front. I'll tack it on the subframe, I'll clamp it down to my flat bench and then I'll, I'll put some more significant welds on it. And all it's going to do is keep, keep these relative to each other and also on, on some of the Group A cars they chop the entire front rail off and put a piece of box section in with, with kind of holes on the trailing edge. So if I want to do that for any subframes that I do, it will get held in place with this. So I need to go to the milling machine, um, reference the front hole and then skim these level. The, uh, the damp has broken. If anyone's wondering why I always have to do this. I'll rebuild it one day. Damper rebuild video. Right, this is bolted to my bench that I think is flat. I, I just quickly tapped my bench together because I don't think I did it all that time ago. Anyway, and then this is uh, this is cleaned on the ends, I guess, and cut to length. So it's kind of there. Interestingly, the subframe was uh, was bent by about four mil, but I guess they all are. It's a load of rubbish welded together, isn't it? You just track it out. But after this, it'll be flat. So that's all good. Hopefully, the cars are flat. Um, I'm just gonna weld that on. I can completely weld it on because it's all clamped down um, and then our jig's done.
This is by far the worst bit. It's, uh, it's absolutely minging. It's really difficult to do and it takes ages. And it's killing me. I'm too old to not wear masks now. Needs a bit of a tidy up, but it's pretty much where it needs to get to. Good 45 minutes of cutting around. I'll do the other side, OC, and then we'll uh, I'll tidy it up and we'll get back together. Okay, they're all cut and clean in the background. I won't get too zoomy in there because, you know, who cares. There's two complicated plates to go in the back, one more so than the other, so we'll start with the easy one. This just closes off all of the rubbish that we've cut already and I'm going to bend it now so I can drill the hole in it using the hole saw jig that we made. But this won't go in until later on, but we'll just, we'll do it, we'll fettle it so it fits and then we'll do the whole drilling kind of after this. It will make sense, it will make sense. go she's a bit happier now the moment we've all not been waiting for it's been so long it's gone rusty look I really need to get my act together don't I oh you're in the way mate Simple as that. Right, I've got to clean all this with a Y wheel. You don't need to see it. And then you'll watch me tack it together. I guess you'll watch me weld it together. See you over there.
one side ceiling. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Thank you, welder. One thing the Artec's good at. Um, so that's the ceiling plates welded in, both sides. Uh, all this white here is just the weldproof prime that I put the other side just to try and make this last as long as it, it did to begin with. So then the next bit is the, is the big rear plates. How do I explain this? I need to put a bend in a piece of metal, but I need to form it, so I can't just use my bending tools. Plus, it's made out of some quite strong steel for mild steel, so I, I want to try and do it properly. So this is D2 tool steel. On this side of the tool steel, I want to put a half moon shape where the metal will bend into, but I can't do it on the milling machine because the z-axis throw isn't long enough you'd normally have a better milling machine or you'd have a horizontal milling machine i haven't got a horizontal mill milling machine but i have got this lathe so i thought this is dodgy i'm going to use a boring bar in the chuck and i've offset it to get the radius that i want because it's a four jaw chuck it means i can offset it so it's going to be a it doesn't matter what radius it is but this acts like a boring head on a horizontal mill. Um, this was given to me by Wales um, and I can't find the inserts, it's like they don't exist. So I've just clamped the wrong insert in there. So we're going to take our time with this one. And then this is the piece of tool steel that I want to machine. So effectively this is the, the work piece and this is the vice, I guess. Um, and what I've done is I've just taken the, taken the tool post off and then clamped it to here. I've drilled two holes in the workpiece so it's so it's clamped best I can. And then I've checked this with the DTI to make sure I think I'm getting the radius that I want. And then I've also put a DTI against the workpiece and checked that it's it's straight. It's pretty much straight. It seems to have a bit of a bow in the middle, but it's just it's just sawn steel, so I mean it probably will, right? So I think I'm kind of at the point where I'm going to try and cut with it. Mm. I'll probably try and do it by writing some some lines. Doing some lines. It's done a really lovely job. One irritating thing is that my, my coolant follows the tool post because that makes sense on a lathe, um, but it, do, it shouldn't now. It just needs to point directly at the tool. So I need to jimmy something up for this. Um, and then I think after that, we're hot to trot. What do you reckon, gang? Brand new.
forgive me for I have gone ahead a little bit and not filmed, but I get I get in that position when I get a bit stressed about stuff and I'm just trying to get on with things. So I've milled that. I know the angle of the divot. I think I know the angle of the divot. It's going to be this. I need to cut this and it needs to go in here. So I think I'm going to mill out a little flat section, drill a hole and then it will bolt to there. And then if I want to swap out that, if it's getting knackered or if I want to heat treat them separately or whatever then, or if I want to change geometry then I can, can't I? So I'll measure this, cut it, mill it all square, I'll meet back here, we might do something like that, I don't know. I'll, ca I'll catch up with you maybe when it's done. Fade to black. So jig done. I can look, start bending these. So this is three mil structural. It needs it needs two tangs that bend up. And then once they're bent up, you can put it in the main bendy thing and bend the main thing thing. Yeah, I made a new support for my for my little press brake because the vice isn't man enough for doing proper three mil structural stuff. Um, and you get a bit more control. And the, the shit one that I had before kept breaking. So this is nice. There you go, step one. So here's the bottom core of it. Lovely stuff. Here's the little divot that we like to put in it. So that goes in there. And then top plate, happy days. Nice. You need to make sure it's all aligned perfectly or it, uh, it needs too much pressure to press it. You have to make sure that this divot is absolutely where it needs to be. I think uh, if you were to do this so you were doing a hundred of them, you'd put locator pins here. But I'm not doing a hundred of them at the moment. Unless a hundred people want group A subframes, which point hit me up. Right, we're back over here. These are, these are MIG plates. So these will get MIG welded on, they were in period, it's the same deal. This I've reamed out, she specifically uh, chose this tube so it would weld in there and then I could ream it to a really high tolerance. The reason being, I, I don't want any play in it at all, I don't want any knocking noises. Not that you can, you'd be able to identify it probably, a small knock like that when you're driving something as loud and leery as this. Um, but what it does do is it means I can locate my... Uh, my locators in really well. So this is a little jig I turned up on the lathe. Uh, it's just designed to fit with a, with a fractional clearance fit, a la Mr. Zeus, uh, through here. So that goes in there. You can just about see that. I'm being careful of how much I want to actually show you this. I want everyone to have a look, but I suppose not many really people. Tune in, as they say. So inner, make sure I'm concentric all the way across, from back plate all the way to the bolt at the front, and it's in the right place for the geometry to be right. Aluminium spacer uh, just means that I have the right distance in between, so I can fit the rose joint in there and the two little rose joint spacers. Right, all I do now is I look for where I have to hit it for it to fit.
Here we go, they're both done. I went ahead and just stuck the the front bits on, uh, not on camera because it was just getting a bit tig festy, wasn't it? So there's no need. But got these lovely like triangulation bits both sides, and then this is all closed off. It's all kind of seam tig welded top and bottom. Um, it came out pretty good, really. Uh, additionally, the the plates have been taken off that mount those stupid things that hold the. Oh, here they are. So that's all clean, exactly how it was in uh, in the old Group A cars. Right, the stop frames have gone. They've gone to a, a coaters, a blasters and a coaters. Originally they were, they were at, I think it's called anti-static heat spray, where it's like in a factory when you, when you heat stuff up and then you blast paint at it, but only a certain amount of paint can get on so it gets all in the, in the crevices and stuff, but it's a big factory procedure so you can't really do it. So, uh, yeah, blasted and, and coated by a good place around the corner that put like a zinc primer coat down. I just want, if someone, if someone is buying one of these, for it to last forever. So, why have I made two of them? So one's going on a, on a period car, um, and the other one's going on like a test car that I'm using to, to test, uh, test a suspension kit that I'm kind of putting together for R32. So in case you've got an R32, it might be of, of interest to you. Basically, you're going to be able to get Group A, Group A lower arms, Group A subframe, and Group A steering arms that will convert the front end geometry of yours to a Group A car, um, and mean that you've got like on car adjustable arms, and they're super light as well. They're like under three kilos for a pair of arms, which is really good. Hopefully, the steering arms are going to do something quite, quite funky, uh, which I think people like. But yeah, it's still. I, I want to completely test everything before it's public and for sale. I'm, I'm putting. I, I do design. You know, it's designed properly. I put it through FEA. Um, check that it's as strong as all of the standard components on the car was. To finish off this. I've got to make drive shafts, but that's. I think it's a bit more of a private job. I don't think I'm going to film that. Um, so the next one, I'm going to put a put an order in for some CNC bits for the arms, and then I'm going to make a couple of pairs of arms. So I think I'll film it this time. Previous previous time was over a long period. Had some stuff going on. Couldn't really film it. But this time I might film it. So 